The Seiko 5 SNK K35 is one of the most pure watches that I've ever reviewed on this channel. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean that it's so surprisingly straightforward, such a big surprise at the quality that you get at its price, and so timeless that it just has something radiantly simple and tasteful about it. Let's walk through the details of the watch first. Now I'm a big fan of the field watch style dial and the Arabics in this dial certainly don't disappoint my taste, but I think it will appeal to a lot of people for a few different reasons. First of all, Notice that this dial is a lovely glossy dial, and this really complements nicely the Seiko 5 applied markers. It also has a nicely bordered date aperture, date, day and date aperture, and that really looks nice along with this applied marker below the 12 o'clock marking. But you might have a hard time noticing this except in a very specific kind of light, but the dial itself, in addition to being glossy, is gilt. Now I don't mean to say that this is actually like a gold or silver dial and then it's painted over or anything like that. All I mean is that there's been a metallic paint that's been applied for each of the hour indices as well as the tracker surrounding the dial. Now the appeal of this, and you can see that it's also uh, gilt for the automatic and 21 joules, is that it gives this watch a surprising amount of depth. And I mean a real uh, depth that you do not find at all at this price range. So uh, we're talking a watch that's $65. This is compared to the Timex Expedition Scout, which I featured in a few different videos here. And just look at the, the depth of this dial, the richness in um, the way that the light interacts with this dial versus how flat and basically uneventful this dial is in comparison. This dial has to almost make up for its blandness with more stuff on the dial. Even compared to the Hamilton Khaki that uh, is one of the uh, longest standing watches in my collection, uh, it really holds up very elegantly. We have to just appreciate this fact first and foremost that there's uh, a very simple um, traditional task in wristwatches and that is making a dial not only legible but enjoyable to look at. I mean, after all, this is something that I've discussed on the Gear Geeks Live podcast. The dial of the watch is the thing that you're going to be looking at. This is the thing that's on display. It's properly called a display because it's always on display. And so appreciating good design is key, I think, with uh, understanding why this watch is appealing. Just the typesetting is perfect. The execution in the materials is far, far above its sub $100 price range. I think I paid $65 for this watch. That is really quite excellent. You can also notice the details in the hands. I would say that the spear hands are a little small as well as the red seconds hand. But in spite of the fact that they're a little bit small for my liking, I'd like them to extend the full length of the dial, they still have nice details. Of course, the red seconds hand pops very nicely, especially with a good strap. But notice also how the hands are both metal and painted. Those are just other nice details, uh, thoroughness, that you don't necessarily see at watches in this price range. This is a 38 millimeter watch with a total of 12 millimeters of thickness. It has 20 millimeter lugs and has a Harlex Seiko's proprietary mineral crystal. It also has a display back, which I'll show you in a little bit. You can see that it's basically just a polished case throughout and you have this recessed crown at four. All of this adds up to the kind of traditional Seiko 5 definition, which is having a day and date aperture, being water resistant, having a crown that's recessed to four o'clock, in addition to having the more technical Seiko 5 aspects of the Diaflex mainspring and the Diashock uh, shock resistance system in the movement. So altogether, this is a very traditional Seiko 5, but it's uh, a Seiko 5 that lives up to its sporting pretensions. The early Seiko 5s, as I've discussed in 
my previous videos on Seiko 5 watches have a deeply sports-rooted theme. The, the 1963 Sportmatic was the first Seiko 5, and that was a watch that was meant to be a entry into affordable sports watches that, on technical specifications, competed with much more expensive Swiss watches. The Crown of Four O'Clock is one of those features that you'll either like it or you'll dislike it so much that you won't get the watch. I personally like it because it does integrate very seamlessly in the case so you get very nice lines as you can see and on the wrist it means you're never going to have that crown digging into your wrist in an annoying way like so many oversized crowns do. The disadvantage of this of course is that you are going to have to take the watch off to set the time or the day and date. The movement is a 7S26 movement, which is a proprietary Seiko movement introduced in 1996. It has a bi-directional winding system and is not hacking or hand winding. You can also see that it has a very minimal amount of finishing applied uh, on the rotor or on the movement itself. I've speculated that this movement is possibly even machine assembled and then perhaps just regulated by a professional. It's very basic, but it does have a 40 hour power reserve and has an accuracy out of the box of uh, plus or minus 15 seconds. Now, you might say, well, okay, so my previous comment about this watch competing with Swiss watches at a higher price range fails on the basis of the primitiveness of this movement, but you kind of have to think of the bigger picture here that this is a watch for $65 that has a lot of the design chops of an expensive Swiss watch and it has a very well respected and proven mechanical movement. It's not the most accurate movement that you're going to find, it's not the most beautiful movement you're going to find, but it's going to reliably power this watch for decades. And I'm perfectly willing to admit that they've been surpassed in some ways by, by movements that have uh, come along afterwards. You know, the 4R movements are a huge improvement in my opinion. but these movements have a, a wonderful place in Seiko's history and they enable us to bring really high quality watches in at a price point that you simply don't find. I've been wearing this watch on a standard type of NATO strap and it is very comfortable this way. It is definitely light enough to manage a very thin nylon comfortably. In a lot of ways it wears like a Timex Weekender. I would say that it's uh, probably a lot more comfortable than the Seiko 5 bracelet that came with it. This is all just a stamped and folded bracelet. And I just took it off right away because I knew this thing was just going to be a hair grabber. And um, th there might be a, a, a role for some people to, to wear a bracelet like this. Um, for example, uh, if you don't always want to worry about getting your fabric straps wet, like if you're going to be in a, a rainy region of the world. Uh, or if you just want something a little bit more formal, uh, definitely this bracelet has a bit of formality, but the uh, construction is definitely extremely basic. And uh, this is one area where um, costs definitely show, and a nice bracelet is just not something you're going to get at a watch in this price range. On the wrist, the watch actually feels smaller than 38 millimeters. I think that's due to the fairly wide fixed bezel. And you know, that's okay. This is a heritage style watch. And wearing a watch that wears like a 36 or 35 millimeter watch isn't a problem for me. I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist. And as you can see, the lug to lug width easily is encompassed by the overall width of my wrist. You can see that it comfortably sits on my wrist in a flat way. And the overall experience of wearing this watch is definitely much like a quartz watch where it's so light that you're going to forget that you're wearing it. And that's really a strength in my opinion. The watch also has great loom, but notice that the second hand does not have any applied loom. So if you need any kind of precision at night, this is not going to be a good watch for it. But for the most part, the kind of person wearing this watch, this, the second hand isn't going to matter as much as having fully loomed indices and well loomed hands. I'll be honest, I've gone through a couple different scripts and a couple different ways of 
hoping to describe this watch to you in a way that conveys how impressed I am with it for its extremely affordable price point. But to me, I guess the best way of saying it is, this is just a good mechanical wristwatch. There's no pretensions about it, and it's a complete surprise. I've had a number of reviewers requesting SNK Seiko 5 reviews after I did the uh, larger Seiko 5 about a year ago, and I've held off because I've been looking for the right Seiko 5 model to review at this size at 38 millimeters, and I'm glad that I waited until I found this one because in the flesh, this watch really is a fine watch, one that even a watch collector with a much more expensive collection should be able to appreciate and enjoy for a long time. As far as cons of the watch go, the size is definitely going to be something that's going to keep a lot of contemporary wristwatch collectors away, but I think that's just a shame. I think that the simple movement is also something that might not be good for people who need something more precise than probably 10 seconds a day. And then definitely the bracelet uh, with its extremely cheap folded links. I just would replace this immediately uh, as I have. I just want to include one last shot next to my Omega Railmaster just to show again that the competence of good typesetting and thoughtful complete dial design is not something that's just limited to Swiss watches. You can find good examples of affordable, well-made, and beautiful, timeless, simple, pure watches like this Seiko 5 SNK K35. What do you think of this Seiko 5? Are you as impressed as I am with it? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And thanks a lot for your time.